Hi everyone, let's talk about the basics of Dart. In this video, I'm going to be breaking uh, the session down into first, we're going to be talking about modifiers, then we're going to talk about some primitive data types. We're going to then go to functions and classes. Uh, then we're going to be talking about collections such as lists, maps, and uh, or, uh, or dictionaries, as you would call it in some of the languages. We're going to be also talking about generics and operators. Um, and also, if time allows, we're going to be talking about extensions and nullability. So uh, I'm not really going to show how I've set up this project uh, that you can see on the screen. It's a simple Flutter application that you can create using Flutter Create. Uh, and also, I've already done a select device in uh, Visual Studio Code. Uh, to choose my current device that I'm going to be debugging the application on or be running the application on. I'm actually running a session without debugging. And um, I thought we shouldn't really go into details on how to set up the project, but look at how Dart actually works. So let's get started with some uh, basics about modifiers. Um, one, I'm going to be talking about three modifiers here. One is final. The other one is const and the other one is var. So um, these are basically three of the main, uh, mainly used modifiers in Dart. Um, and they're quite different from each other. Uh, for instance, let's create a function here. Uh, or actually, since we haven't talked about functions, maybe not. let's not do that. Uh, let's talk directly about final. So if you create a final um, data, that means that your intentions in this application is not to change that for the entirety of the application. And by not changing that, I don't mean you don't change the internals of that. Uh, as we'll talk about classes later, you will understand that a final instantiation of a class doesn't necessarily mean that the internals of the class are not going to change, except that you're not going to change the value of this variable that you're creating. So for instance, if I say final, my name is foobar, I can't anywhere else in the application than say my name is Bass. That's just not going to work. Um, and as you can see, final is basically a way of telling Dart that you're not going to assign this variable to anything else for the entirety of the application after you've created the assignment to begin with. So that's for final. Um, the other thing that we need to talk about uh, for modifiers is const. You may be a bit confused as to what is the difference between const and final, because essentially in this example, they behave exactly the same const variables can't be assigned a value. Uh, and that's actually a bit strange, I would say, a message. Um, what you need to know until we talk about classes is that a constant is a compile time constant. Uh, that means that the value of a constant um, variable uh, is not going to be changed internally either. So, uh, as I said, we're gonna. It's probably a bit confusing to talk about constants and finals without talking about classes. So let's let's leave this for now and just imagine that a constant uh, is truly a constant value outside and inside, whereas a final value is a value that cannot be assigned anything else once it's been assigned the initial value. As I said, this can be a bit confusing to start with, but that's okay. We will talk about classes later and you'll get this. Uh, and finally, uh, we also have var in Dart, which is a variable. And as you can see, as soon as you change something to var, that means that you can actually assign another value to it, as long as that value is of the same type. So you can't, for instance, say 10 here, because Dart's very, um, it's basically, it. Uh, can understand the data types from the values that you assign to your variables. Um, 
So if you change this just to var my name, you can see that you can assign value of 10 to it, and you can also assign the value of foo to it. Well, that is because if you press command space here, my name has become dynamic since you haven't assigned a data type to it. But if you say my name is a string like this, a non-nullable variable, my name must be initialized. Okay, we can just say is nullable. You can see that you cannot assign an integer to it since you've basically given it a data type. Don't worry about nullability for now. We're going to be talking about nullability as the last point in this video. So for now, just know that a variable is a modifier for an identifier in your application that you can assign different values to. And its initial value can be completely replaced by another value later on in your application. So that's final const and var. Uh, it can be a bit confusing thinking about that without having the whole picture, without knowing about classes and other things. I understand that. Uh, and you don't have to learn this just <laughs> by me giving you a few examples. So let's maybe have a look at the rest of the video. And I hope that I can make this more clear for you as we go on. Okay. So those are our modifiers. The next, next thing that we're going to be talking about is primitive data types. And I'm going to be specifically talking about three different data types. Uh, one is a, a string, for instance, foobar. A string is a series of characters that you, for instance, a name, the, a person's name. And there's a string. In Dart, you can specify strings with two different types of quotations. One is a single quote and the other one is a double quote. A single quote is used for all strings unless you need a double quote. And by that, I mean, for instance, you want to say foobar. Well, that's perfectly good string, has no punctuations or anything in it. You can even put a dot in it if you want. Uh, you can put an exclamation mark, that's great. But how about a string that you wanna say, I don't eat meat. Let's do that. I say, I don't eat meat. All right. Well, that's not going to work because there is another single quote here, which you either have to escape with a backslash, or you could also choose for readability purposes to make your string a double coded string. And this is what I meant that all strings in Dart are wrapped with single quotes unless you need double quotes. And in this case, well, you could argue, actually, we put the, uh, the, I put the apostrophe at the, at the wrong place I can see now. Um, so in this case, for readability purposes, we want the apostrophe here and we don't really want to escape it like this. Um, so in that case, we're going to use double quotes. So this is a string and you can see how it works by, for instance, going to your widget tree here and in the build function, for instance, I can say my name. Isn't that what we call it? No, str. Uh, okay. Let me bring this str here so we can actually see it. Uh, and I'm going to say str. Okay. I'm going to just save the file. And you can see that the string is getting printed out. You could also do the same thing with single quotes, of course, and by escaping that apostrophe. Save again. And you can see the same strings being printed to the screen. Okay. That's for strings. The other data type is integer. For instance, final my age is 18. Well, let's just be honest, I'm actually 34. So I'm going to print it as well. And um, you can see by pressing command space, you can get the data type of your variable as well. So here, my age is 34. I'm going to print it to the screen by just pressing command S so that it re basically it does a hot reload, rebuilds the home page stateless widget, which I don't expect you to know if you're completely new to Flutter and Dart, and that's okay. The important thing here is creating this uh, final variable and then printing its data out. So that's integer, and you can perform very simple operations on it, for instance, by doing a plus 
or minus or division and things like that. So you can say minus 10 and you would get 24 on the screen. That's integer. The next data type that we're going to be talking about is double. For instance, my height. I can say 1.70, for instance. And that's in meters, for instance, or 1.77 to be exact. And I'm going to print that as well, my height. And you can see the data type has become double. So Dart's very intelligent. It understands that if you put a dot here, that you're basically representing a double value. So uh, that's very useful for when you need precision um, and you don't want to lose your uh, some parts of your integer uh, when you're doing, for instance, uh, divisions or multiplications and things like that. Uh, so that's double. Um, if you haven't done, if you've done programming in any other language, I don't really have to go through lots of details to tell you about how doubles work and why we need them. And I'm kind of actually assuming that uh, in this video that you're not totally new to programming. So that's double int and string. Okay, let's talk about now functions and arguments. A function is a piece of code that's encapsulated inside an identifier with optional parameters. Um, and by optional parameters, I mean that a function doesn't necessarily have to have parameters. Let's say we have a function that says uh, print my name. Use Create a function in Dart by first specifying its um, return value. If a function doesn't have a return value, you can specify void as you would do any other language. Or in many languages, uh, you specify the return type. Um, in Dart, you can also skip the return type, but you're gonna, if you have a linter, you can uh, get a warning here telling you that the return type of this function is not explicitly defined. So it's really good to practice to say either you return void, which means you don't return anything, or you specifically return a data type such as string or integer or double or any other thing or any other data type. In here, we're going to say print foobar. And I'm going to go here and then invoke this function. By invoking function, I mean that I'm calling it. I'm, I'm saying do your thing. So print my name like this and then semicolon. I'm going to run the application again. And then you can see here that my name is printed. So that's, that is the basics of creating a function. Now, as to the arguments, yeah, Dart has, in my opinion, complicated arguments a little bit. In language like Swift and Python, it's a, a little bit easier to understand what type of arguments there are and that they have default values, for instance. But in Dart, you have so many different combinations of ver uh, arguments and whether or not they can get default values and their nullability and the if ability for them to have names from the outside world. So in the interest of not complicating it too much, I'm just going to go through some of the basics of arguments just to keep the level of this video at the basic. So one way of passing an argument to a function is just to write what you, the data type of your argument and also a name for it that the function is going to use internally. For instance, I'm going to print, I'm going to say print name and then I'm going to give this argument the data type of string and then name. So I'm saying print any name. And that means that I'm going to pass you a name and then you have to print it. So in here, I'm just going to say print name. OK, and then in here, I'm going to say print name foobar. As you can see, default arguments that you create like this in Dart aren't named from the outside world. That means that you can't in here say name is foobar. So there is no name, the parameter called name. Uh, so you just have to omit the name of the argument. So in this case, I'm going to save now, and then you can see foobar is being printed to the screen. But what if you want to make sure that from the outside of this function that this argument actually has a name. So let's change this to age so that we're not talking about named arguments called name, which makes it a bit <laughs> difficult to understand. Maybe I'm just going to say print age 
and then here we're going to change it print age and then we're going to say 34 okay but you can see that it doesn't have a name from the outside world uh, from where you're invoking the function to make it a named parameter you basically give it a default value and then you wrap it inside curly brackets and in here now if you invoke your function you can see that it has a name now that this function has a named parameter you don't have to really say that prints age with a named parameter called age because it's kind of duplication of the purpose of the function you're saying print age age you could press command 2 on mac and just change this to print something change his name of the function in both places now we're saying print something oh something is an age or you can say 40 here and you can see that that value is being printed now if you don't provide a value for this argument uh, Dart's going to be able to get the default value. So I think this is a good level for uh, functions and arguments to leave it like this um, for basically those who are interested in learning the basics of functions and arguments in Dart. Now let's talk a little bit about classes. Uh, classes are very important to understand in Dart because you can't really get away with not using classes in some language maybe Python you can get away with basically just creating functions all over the place and just using functions but in Dart I don't think you can get away with uh, just using functions because almost everything is a class actually I think everything is a class yeah I think so um let's create a simple class and uh, call this class person you create a class by just prefixing the name of your class and, and the name of the class, the first letter always has to be uppercase. So you shouldn't do this. That's not good. As you can see, you actually get a warning. Um, a class can have attributes and functions. Uh, and by attributes, I mean that it can have variables inside it. Uh, whether those variables are final, constant, or um, just simple variables. Now, in this case, a person, we can say, has a name uh, and also has an age. As you can see, I've decided to say that these are final. Um, and as soon, as soon as you do that, you will get uh, a warning from Dart saying that, well, you haven't really initialized these values. Uh, okay, the first thing you may want to do is just to give it a value, say foobar. Foobar and then age is 34 but when you do this if you remember from when we talked about modifiers a final variables assignment cannot be changed later on in the program so as soon as you've done this and you create an instance of your class you cannot say later that name is something else so all instances of this person class will have a name called foobar and an age of 34. that's not good <laughs> that's not really how classes should work they should be able to encapsulate their uh, fields in a way that is um, not completely transparent to the outside world but also that they allow changes to those in a controlled manner um, and also in this case when you create an instance of a person you don't want that name and age to be preset you want to be able to specify those now one quick um, tip in visual studio is that if you want to create uh, basically you can if you want to get rid of these warnings or errors in this case compile time errors that are telling you that well you're saying that your person has a name and an age but how am i going to give those values to you then you should create something called a constructor a constructor of a class if you're familiar with other programming languages it could also be called initializers in some other languages uh, for instance uh, such as the init function um, in python uh, or yeah init function for instance also in swift but here there are, um, yeah you could call it constructor or init but i think in dart is a lot more accepted to call them constructors uh, you can press command and dot in Visual Studio in one of these variables and then it can create a default constructor for you. And you can see that it looks like this. So um, this name and this age and Dart is 
intelligent enough to infer that once someone creates a person instance by specifying a name and age, those have to be saved in this. Of course, you can do stuff like this as well. You can say, well, hmm, I'm going to do it myself. Well, you could do that, but it's kind of unnecessary unless you want to put some more logic on top of a default constructor that simply assigns a given value to your fields in the class. And while we're talking about this, you may want to also know about initializer lists. Initializer lists are a way of providing extra logic on top of your constructor. For instance, let's go back to how we had the constructor from before. In this case, for instance, if you want to say this is an adult, okay. In our world, for instance, just for the sake of simplicity, we say an adult is, is someone with any name but an age more than or equal to 18. You could simply do that in a, in a constructor using an initializer list by simply putting a colon here and, for instance, asserting a specific condition. You want to assert that age is more than or equal to 18. And that's perfect. That's perfectly acceptable in Dart. And in here you can say final foo is a person whose name is foobar and whose age is 17 or 16. That's okay. Actually, an adult, we said. And then you want to print foo, for instance. Now I'm going to save the application and then you can see that we got an assertion failure here. And that is, it's actually telling you it's on line 21. And that's our assert here. You can change, of course, the value that you're sending to your adult class to make the assertion uh, accept a given value. So that's that's an initializer list. They're used for a lot of many different reasons, and not just for asserts. You can also perform additional computation in an in initializer list. But to make this video not 500 minutes, we're just going to talk about assert for now, but just know that there is an initializer list available in Dart and you can read more about it um, on uh, Dart and Flutter's documentation website. That's for initializer lists. Now let's talk about collections. Collections, uh, or as you may know them, uh, as maps or dict uh, in Python or dictionaries in Objective-C or I think, how would you call them in Swift? Dictionaries as well. Yeah. They're a way of putting together uh, data that's related somehow to each other. For instance, if you want to say your favorite uh, names, you want to collect them in a data type, that would be a list in Dart. And then you create it like favorite names i'm going to use american uh, oh, uh spelling of favorite that's okay um we're going to say favorite names and the way you create a list uh, in dart is using square brackets and then you specify foo comma bar comma baz and dart is intelligent enough to understand that favorite names now is a list of string Okay, you can of course say list string be explicit here as a list of string, but you don't have to because Dart understands it itself. And then you can of course print it. You can say print favorite names uh, and you get foo bar bats like that. Or if you want to go through the items in favorite names, you can say for for var or we can say string name in favorite names this is how you would enumerate a list as you would call it and then you can print name like that you can see you get foo bar bass in the output um there's also other ways of uh, going through a list and that is for instance one of my favorites uh, favorite names. Uh, one of my favorite functions uh, on a list is for each. 
and then you can just say print that's another way of doing it and then you can see that the result is exactly identical so that's the list you can perform different operations in a list and by just putting dot in front of it I'm of course not going to go through any of these at the moment because we're going to keep this video at the basic level but feel free to experiment with it just know that a list is a collection of related or a collection of values somehow related to each other uh, of the same data type usually uh, in dark you can blend different data types in a list by making it a list of dynamic uh, you can have a look at that yourself I don't think it's appropriate to talk about that in this particular video but we can do it in our video later uh, so that's for a list we're also going to be talking about sets a set is a list uh, of data uh, that cannot have or should not and will not have uh, duplicates um, and you create a set uh, by doing this for instance we say const names is a set of string and let's say and actually i think we should do this like this and like this now we go here and we say names and now you can see that names is a set of string what does that even mean let's just print it out we say names right and then you can see it gives us foo bar pass. okay I'm going to put foo here again, and you can immediately see that we get an error message here. And this is a really good way for uh, for you to understand how intelligent Dart is when you're working with basic data types, such as set, since the creation of this set is, um, is controlled by Dart. Uh, putting any duplicate items in the set is going to result in a compile time error. But what if we removed this const and made it a variable and then started to cheat and add a duplicate value here let's say bar and then we print names you can see that we don't have duplicate values in our set since that's how a set works it removes and doesn't allow duplicate values uh, so that's that's for a set uh, I'm not going to go too, into too much details uh, about sets but you can experiment with sets uh, and have a look at the different functions that are available in a set um, and finally we're going to talk about maps and when we're talking about collections of course you can't not talk about maps um, a map is usually uh, a key value pair by that I mean in a list uh, for instance here we have a list of strings it's just like a an ordered l series of data of the same data type for instance um, the first element is food the second element is bar and the third element is baz but there's nothing really identifying them uh, a in a map uh, you wouldn't just have values but you would also have keys identifying them uh, and you would uh, the best way to maybe talk about maps is just to give an example and you would do that by um, creating a map and you would simply create for instance string string like this curly brackets uh, and in here you have told dart that you have a map a collection whose keys are of type string and whose values are also of type string so in here i can say my favorite name uh, is bubar and my address is sweden and then you save uh, and then i can simply print this and say data as you can see in the output dart is telling you that there's a map um, the first key on it is my favorite name and the second key is my address and there's value in them you can see my favorite name is foobar and my address is sweet and of course you can read that data specific points of that data by specifying the key whose value you're interested in reading so i can say print data and square brackets and then your key my 
address like that. And then you can see screening gets printed out to the screen. Okay, that is for map. Uh, and like other collection types, I'm not going to go into too much details about it. Just know that in a map, you can have keys and values. Uh, your keys basically describing a way for you to be able to nudge the values inside the map. Okay. Now we've talked about classes, data types, uh, modifiers. Uh, let's now talk about generics. Uh, generics. Uh, shouldn't be that scary a, a subject to talk about. I think generics were a lot more scary when you looked at C++ and its templates. In modern languages, you can use generics um, pretty much effortless, uh, effortlessly, and Dart is no exception. Um, generics are, simply put, a way to generalize pieces of code so that they work not only on, for instance, strings or integers, but they can also work on a broader range of data types. Um, that's a very simplified version of talking about generics. And to do that, now that we know how classes work, uh, let's create a class uh, called stack. Um, this is very simple stack that we're going to just say void um uh, and for instance and then we're gonna say uh or let's just actually say just normal stack push and pop right for now okay now a stack's primary functionality is just to push a value and then you pop a value out of it so it's just first in last out kind of mm, thinking uh in in here you can see we have a stack class and it has a push and a pop but we don't actually say what is it pushing you can say int value so you're gonna push integers and then you're gonna return integers but mm, that's not really uh, that's not very generic that means that if you want to later for instance have a stack of doubles or you want to have a stack of strings then you would have to have a separate class just for those. So in, in this case, you would have to rename this, for instance, into int stack and then create another class called string class that works with strings. Or you could say, OK, well, my application only needs numbers. But OK, we also have doubles. Uh, how about doubles? OK, then you have to have another class called double. And then you would have to change all of these to use double. Right, And this is exactly where generics come to play. They allow you to work with a broader set of data types. In this case, we're going to create, for instance, a class of num stack or number stack that works with any number. And in here, we're going to say t. And this is, this is no magic word. t doesn't really mean anything. It's just when you say uh, less than and then mo more than signs here and then you specify anything in here that becomes your generic type uh, which you can use inside your class to specify the type that your class is working with so let's just call it t just to be consistent with <laughs> almost everyone else using uh, generics in pretty much any language uh, we start with t um, and then in here, you can say void push, and then you're pushing t now, right? And also, you're now returning t when you pop, right? And then we're going to, inside our class, go and create a var, um, or for instance, final, my data, or just data, which is going to be the list of t. And we're going to initialize it with empty list. Uh, one convention in Dart, since we don't have a private uh, keyword in Dart, is to prefix your uh, properties with uh, underscore to make them uh, private. Uh, in here, when we say push, we're just going to go 
say data append or is it add i think value right and then when you want to pop then you just say data uh so like this uh does it have remove last you can see remove last not only removes the last item in the array but also or in the list but also returns it as you can see the data type of this is t so this is really good we can just say remove last and then we have to of course return it now this is now we're talking about this as you can see this function has uh, one line of code in it and this function also has one line of code in it one convention which is not really related to generics but i think is is the right time to talk about it one thing you can do in dart to make your code a little bit easier to read um and that's 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 very relative i mean it, you may just want to leave it like this a lot of people are happy to read code like this that's fine but you could also say like that just with this kind of pointer and no return needed so your code becomes a little bit more compact some people are happier to read this and some people aren't uh, so just pick and choose what is good for your project and if you're working on your own then you decide but if you're working a team the team decides what's uh, easier to read so that's that's one way of creating and working with generics but you may be asking well a number stack um uh, that's that's not really a number i mean we just said t so i can just create a number stack here and say final my stack is a number stack and then hmm off strings well that's not really good but what you can do in here when you're working with generics it actually can tell dart that you expect specific things for your generic type for instance we can say extends num that tells dart that t the incoming values into your classes into your generic type have to be of specific data types for instance now we should be able to say double or int and both should work because if you press command and and click on int or wait actually we don't have to click on it we could just simply move our cursor to it that's really good then to see the documentation you can see int is an abstract class that extends num we haven't talked about extending uh, but if you've worked in any pro programming language you know that extending is kind of like inheriting um, so that means you have a class and you want to create a subclass or another class that gets uh, gets functionality from this class sitting up here and uh, and perhaps add some more functionality to that class that's that's inheritance so this person this class just like a person is inheriting things from its parents for perhaps their looks for instance but is adding more to the mix so that's that's extending and in here we're basically saying that the value that we're accepting should be inheriting or extending as we would say in dart from the number um, abstract class okay that's for generics uh, now let's talk about operators um operators are very simple to understand um to me at least and uh, a way of talking about them is just operator takes a given value and does something with it uh, given a second value for instance i can say my age is 10 plus 24. Uh, this plus is an operator uh, and you can actually command and click on it to see how it looks like num operator plus you can see that it allows you to if because this this operator is actually defined uh, on the num abstract class uh, so it operates on that class and takes another value of the same type and gives you back a number so that's that's how operators work um i don't think we can talk about operators and keep the level of this video at the basic level i think perhaps it's going to be a whole big explosion of information uh, because operators are uh, 
they can be talked about in a very basic sense, but they can also be talked about in a very detailed sense, and it could be its own video. So if you're interested in knowing more about operators, just let me know, please. And operators work not only on, for instance, integers, but they also work on strings. For instance, you can say long string is full bar times 100. And that is a multiplication of this string repeated 100 times. <laughs> so you can say print long string. Uh, I didn't know about this multiplication of strings until someone mentioned it in LinkedIn. So I'm very grateful for that. And if you command click on it, you can see that it is a string operator. Uh, it takes in the number of times this string has to be repeated. And if I save this application, you can see foo bars printed to the screen hundreds of times. Okay. Now, um, I'm actually noticing that really we didn't need a simulator to the right hand side, but I just brought it up so that we can test our application as uh, I'm talking about the different subjects. So that's for operations. Um, one of the other topics, uh, almost the last topic is extensions that I want to bring up. And extensions are ways of adding functionality to existing data types. Um, for instance, if you want to be able to calculate half of any integer, you can create, um, for, you can of course do like this. For instance, you can say int my age is 34, and then you can say int half, or you could just say final actually here. Final half of my age is my age divided by two, and then you can print half of my age. And you can say, and you can see that it says 17, but the value is converted, unfortunately, to um, a double. Uh, but you can use this operator to do an integer division. And now you can see the value is 17. Uh, so to be able to create an extension for any integer, to be able to just say, for instance, my age dot half, this this property doesn't exist as of now but we can extend integer just like this an extension is defined by first saying extension and the name of your extension which is very useful if you now we haven't talked about this yet but if you want if you have a library and you want to import specific parts of that library into your application it's really useful to give names to your extension so you can import only that extension into your application. But don't worry about that. Just for now, know that you have to specify a name um, for extension uh, to make it perhaps more readable for people who want to use it or import the code. Now, you want to basically specify a, a getter here of type integer. And then you say get to specify a getter. And then we can call it half. And what this does is just takes this, which is reference to the value we're operating on now. In this case, my age will be this. And then we'll do the exact same thing that we did down there at line 26. So now I can run the application and I will get the value of 17. So um, this extension gives you an idea how you can create extensions. Uh, as I said, I don't want to go into too much detail. I want to keep the level of this video at the basics. But in this, you in three lines of code, or basically two lines of code, you learned about extensions and also getters. You could make this, of course, a function by doing like this. And then in here, you will invoke that. It will do the exact same thing, but some things it's easier just to make any getters. So you don't actually have to invoke a function. Uh, like that. Mm. That's for that's for extensions, and I just want to touch upon also uh, nullability, which is um, getting more and more popular in many different programming languages. Uh, Kotlin has that, Swift has that, uh, and now Dart also has that on the stable channel. So nullability uh, is uh, or nullability is. Um, 
a way for you to specify uh, that a value can be null or it can not be present. Uh, and you do that simply by giving a, qu a question mark in front of your, or providing a question mark in front of your data type. So for instance, you can say string my name um, like that. And then you can say print my name. Okay. And then save and you can see that Flutter says null. If you didn't specify a question mark here, then Dart will be quite angry at you because it says that, well, you haven't provided a name for it. Uh, you haven't provided a value for this variable. But if you make it nullable, Dart understands that, well, you may be null, you may not have a value. So uh, you can also specify value for it, of course, but it can also be null. So you can say my name is null and then print it again. And you will see that first says value and then says null. Uh, but what happens if you say 100, 100 times is my name times 100? And then we don't specify a value for it. You can see that Dart is now complaining, saying that, well, I can't multiply a null value hundreds of times or 100 times. Well, because I can't, because there's no value in it. And that's why you would use what Kotlin calls the Elvis operator, uh, kind of. But that in Dart is specified as question, question. Question, question means that if the value to the left is null, then use the value to the right. And then I'm going to say no value. And then close that parenthesis like this. What this does is uh, Dart looks at my name, which is an, a nullable value, and says, well, hmm, I will try to read its value. But in this case, it's null. Then I'm going to fall back to the value given to the right-hand side. And of course, you can chain these. Like you can have string your name, which is also optional. And you can say, hmm, your name, otherwise this. So basically, it starts from the left. It says, OK, my name, otherwise, if that's nil or null, your name. And if that's null, I'm going to use, I'm just going to use this. But what happens if you say string their name, which also is optional, and then you don't have a value here? Well. That's not going to go so well because th this whole chain is null at the moment. Uh, you could, of course, give it a value, but Dart doesn't know that. You can give this value, for instance, some initial value, but Dart doesn't really understand that, well, one of these could at some point become a valid string. So you would need to provide a default value in this case. For instance, default so that Dart understands that, well, okay, I'm going to go and use my name. If that's not there, I'm going to use your name. And if that's not there, their name. And then finally, I'm going to resort back to using default. So um, nullability is a way for, as I said, for variables to, uh, or is a way of labeling variables uh, and values in general in Dart um, to be able to contain null. Well. Um, this is a whole big subject that I don't really think we should be talking about in this video because otherwise this video is going to be a whole hour. But just know that for now that nullability uh, is available in Dart stable channel and you can play with it. And if you're interested in knowing more about nullability, please just let me know. I can do more videos uh, just like this and explain these subjects in detail. So. Um, I think now we've talked quite a lot about the basics of Dart. And if you've used any other program languages, uh, I hope that you understood most of the things that I said. I think if you're interested in any of these specific subjects, please do let me know. I'll be more than happy to provide more videos uh, about those topics. So I hope you enjoyed the video and have a good day.